Here we have a first order linear constant coefficient difference equation. Now, why is this equation first order? Well, the, or, um, the highest order in it is n plus 1. Okay, so that makes it a first order difference equation. If the h highest order was n plus 2, then we would have a second order difference equation. Notice that we have a linear combination of the y terms. We have 1 y n plus 1 minus 3 y n. So in general, we want a linear combination of the y terms. And these values are constants. They're just numbers. So we can't have anything involving n. Okay, a cannot be a function of n or b cannot be a function of n. a and b must be constants, fixed numbers. So that means that we cannot have terms like yn squared. yn squared is not a linear combination of the y terms. Neither can we have terms involving yn multiplied by yn plus 1. Things like that are not allowed. Now notice on the right hand side that we have a uh, constant 4. Now we don't have to have a constant. We could have say something like n cubed on the right hand side and we would still have a first order linear constant coefficient difference equation just so happens that we have a constant here on the right hand side. Now the initial condition for this dif difference equation is y sub 0 equals 1. From this we could generate y sub 1, y sub 2, y sub 3 etc. We could um, solve this uh, difference equ equation. We could find the sequence y sub n. That's what we're after. Okay, um, the first term is 1. We could get the next term by you know, setting n equal to 0 in the difference equation. So we get y sub 0 plus 1, or y sub 1 minus 3 times y sub 0 equals 4. If we solve this for y1, we get y1 equals 4 plus 3 y sub 0, which is 4 plus 3 times 1, which is 7. So the second term is 7. And so on. We could set n equal to 1, and we'd have y sub 2 minus 3 y sub 1 equals 4 and uh, plug in for y1, plug 7 in for y1 and get y sub 2 and keep going like that. Now of course we are, are going to use the z-transform method to solve this. The first step is to multiply this difference equation by z to the power of minus n so we can bring in the definition of the z-transform. The next step involves summing each of these terms from n equals 0 to infinity. That makes sense because this summation is involved in the definition of the z-transform. Notice straight away with this sum here that if we take out this tree, it's just a constant factor, it can be pulled out, pulled through the summation sign, that what we are left with is the definition of the z-transform of this sequence here y sub n. Now the z-transform of y sub n, z of y sub n, can be written as big Y of z as we know. Okay, uh, now what about this term here? Well, you can see that we ha basically have the definition of the z-transform of this sequence here. Now you might recognize that this is a shifted sequence. It's a sequence that has been shifted to the left by one place and that type of sequence was covered in the previous video. Okay so you can look up the Z transform of a general um, left shifted sequence. Okay well this is left shifted by one place so we can see what it is. It's Z times big Y of Z minus little z Y sub 0 where big Y of Z is the Z transform of little y sub n. Okay, now, what about this term here on the right-hand side? Well, the 4 is a constant factor. We can just pull that out. Now, notice that we can write u sub n in here, where u sub n is the unit step function, or unit step sequence. u sub n is equal to 1 for values of n running from 0 up to plus infinity. So, you know, it's just equal to 1, so we haven't really changed anything. Um, it's equal to 0 for negative n, but negative n doesn't even come into this. Okay, so that's the unit step sequence that we covered in previous videos. But notice here that 
this summation is just the Z transform of the sequence U sub n. We multiply by Z to the minus n and we sum from 0 to infinity. So what is the Z transform of U sub n? Well, you can just look that up in a table of transforms. You can see that it's Z over Z minus 1. Okay, notice here that we have little y sub 0. That's the initial condition. That's equal to 1. So we have minus Z times 1. Now to solve the difference equation, we need to isolate big Y of Z, which is the Z transform of little y sub n. So I've just factorized y of z out of the left-hand side, and I've added z to both sides. Okay, so here is big Y of z. Now our job is to get the sequence, the solution to the problem. So we want to sequence y sub n. So how do we go from the z transform of y sub n to y sub n? Well, we get the inverse z transform. So here we have z of y sub n, so y sub n is going to be z inverse of all of this thing here. Now what I will do here is I will add these two fractions, combine them into a single fraction. Okay, so we need to have z times z minus 1 on top here. z times z minus 1 over z minus 1 times z minus 3 will give us z over z minus 3 that we saw before. Alright, so um, let's just simplify what's on top we will get z squared minus z plus 4z, which is z squared plus 3z. Okay, we can factorize z out of the top. Now, um, now we need to find a sequence whose z transform is given by this thing here. Now, if you go to your table, you won't find anything like that. So we need to read the table in reverse. So we need to look at this column here. Okay, these are functions of z, and we need to read out to the left column to find a sequence whose Z transform is given by these. And of course we see nothing like these. Um, well, we're looking for these kind of expressions. But we're actually interested in terms of the, f the, you know this form here um, because that's what what this thing is built up from. So we need to separate this out into its partial fractions. And if we do that, we will get terms like this, whose inverse Z transform is given by a to the power of n. All right, so I'm going to take this thing here and separate it out into its partial fractions. It turns out that a and b will be constants, just numbers, that will make this work. That's usually the case when these powers are just ones. Okay, the values on top are just constants. Okay, one way to do this problem is to write it like this. The other way is to use the cover-up method, which I'll get back to. Um, we combine these two fractions into a single fraction, and of course it must equal this fraction here. And that can only happen if the numerators are equal. The denominators are obviously equal. So if we look at the z terms, we have a plus b times z. So that's the coefficient of z. We take these together, a plus b times z equals 1z, so a plus b must equal 1, if these are to equal for all values of z. Okay, the coefficient of z must be the same on both sides. And then the constant term then, as you can see, is uh, made up of minus 3a minus b, and that must equal the constant term, plus 3. So, you know, we just add these together, because if we add them, the b's will cancel, so we get minus 2a equals 4, or a equals minus 2. And if we know a, we can find b, we can plug it in here. So b is equal to 1 minus a, which is 1 minus minus 2. 1 plus 2 is, is 3. Okay, the other way to find a and or b is to use the cover-up method. So, um, to find out what a is up here, what we need to do is imagine covering up z minus 1, that factor in the denominator, and replacing z in what's left, all of this here, with 1. Set z equal to 1, because um, that's the value 
that gives us zero in the denominator. You know, if we put z equal to one, we'll get one minus one, which is zero, okay? So, you know, if we set z minus one equal to zero, we get z equals one. So that's where that one comes from. So we cover up the factor z minus one, and we replace what's left with one. So we'll get one plus three is four, over one minus three is minus two. Four divided by minus two gives us minus two. That's exactly what we had here. Okay, so that's how we find a, and then to find b we do something similar. This time we cover up the other factor z minus three, and we replace what's left with z equals three. So we'll get three plus three is six, over three minus one is two. Six divided by two gives us three. So there we have it, b is three. So that's a quick way to find a and b. Okay, so there we have it. Now we have it in a form that um, we can look up in our table. Okay, the z inverse operator is linear, just like um, the z transform is linear, as we saw in the previous video. So we can take this true. Well, see, we have a, a linear combination of z over z minus 1 and z over z minus 3. Okay, if I multiply in the z here, we have minus 2z over z minus 1 plus 3z over z minus 3. So the minus 2 and the 3 are just constant factors that can be pulled out. So we want to get z inverse of z over z minus 1, and we want to get z inverse of z over z minus 3. So we saw functions of this form in the table. Okay, This is the one that I mentioned earlier. That's what we want. So we need to look at a and sub it in here. So a is 1 here. So the inverse transform of z over z minus 1 is 1 to the power of n. The inverse transform of z over z minus 3 is 3 to the power of n, because a is 3 here. Okay, so there it is. The inverse transform of this quantity here is our sequence y sub n. You could work out a few values as a check. We could work out y sub 0. Well, we were given this in the question. y sub 0 is the initial condition, which is 1. So... If we plug 1 in here, we get minus 2 plus 3 to the power of 1, which of course is plus 1. If we work out y sub 1, which we did earlier actually, we got an answer of 7. With minus 2 plus 3 to the power of 1 plus 1. Um, that's uh, minus 2 plus 9, which is 7. And we saw that earlier, and we could continue. Okay, let's take another example. We want to solve the difference equation y sub n plus 1 minus y sub n equals d. So d is some constant, and the initial value y sub 0 is a constant, which is a. Notice here that y sub n plus 1 minus y sub n is the difference between consecutive terms in the sequence, and that difference is the constant d. So, you know, this sequence is an arithmetic sequence. Okay, a sequence which has a constant difference between consecutive terms is arithmetic. So without doing any z transform, we could actually just work this out quite easily. Uh, y0 is a. So if I just write down the sequence y sub n, the first term is a. How do we get the next term? Well, you know, if we let n equal um, 0, we get y sub 1 minus y sub 0 equals d from the equation. So we can see that y sub 1 is just d plus y sub 0. So y sub 1 is um, the first term a plus d. So in general, if we rearrange this equation, y sub n plus 1 is equal to the previous term, y sub n plus the constant d. So to get the next term, we take the previous term, a plus d, and add d onto it. So we get a plus d plus d, or a plus 2d. So this is the familiar arithmetic sequence. We can get our general term by noting the coefficient of d. So the general term y sub n is a plus the coefficient of d, which is 1 less than the subscript. Okay, it's n minus 1 times d. Actually, we need to be a little careful here. It's n times d. because n begins with 0, not 1. Uh, 
traditionally we are probably used to seeing this formula for the general term of an arithmetic sequence because um, the first term we would call y1 or maybe t1 but in this situation the first term is y0 so we have to allow for that so we want the first term to come out to be a so we need to put 0d here to get a okay so let's go and get this result using z transforms so the first step is to multiply our difference equation by z to the power of minus n the next step is to sum from 0 to infinity notice here that this term is none other than the z transform of the sequence y sub n which we will write as y big y of z so this looks similar to the previous example this d is a constant that can be factorized out and like before we see we can replace 1 with u sub n because u sub n is equal to 1 for um, n equals 0 to infinity so here we have d times the z transform of the sequence u sub n we can go and look that up in our table it's z over z minus 1 now we've already seen this we want the z transform of the shifted sequence y sub n plus 1 so as a reminder we go back here it's z big y of z minus z y 0 ok next we sub in for y sub 0 that's the constant a we factorize out big y of z so big y of z times z minus 1 um, we bring the minus z a over it becomes plus a z next we divide both sides by z minus 1 so if we do that we get dz over z minus 1 times z minus 1 so that's dz over z minus 1 squared and we divide this by z minus 1 now luckily here we don't have to do any partial fraction problem um, because this function here has an inverse transform that we can read directly from the tables similarly for this one here so that's our y of z which is just the z transform of sequence y sub n so if we want the sequence y sub n we have to get the inverse z transform of all of this so we use the linearity property of the z transform um, so the inverse z transform is also linear so d and a are just constants we can pull them out now as I've said already we can look this up directly in the table uh, here it is actually this is the RAM sequence that we covered in a previous video so the inverse transform of this is just n okay what about this one here well we've dealt with this type before z over z minus 1 that's just u sub n okay this is actually a geometric sequence you know we've this is the one that we used before if we set a equal to 1 we'll have 1 to the power of n which is 1 that gives us the unit step sequence this is equal to 1 for n equals 0 to infinity so u sub n is just a special case of the geometric sequence a to the power of n so there we have it uh, we actually for u sub n we don't have to write anything because that's just 1 and we are only dealing with values um, of n which are running from 0 to plus infinity okay so that's what we saw before, y sub n equals a plus nd.